Hello, everyone, and welcome to Orlando Shake special presentation. This is an interview with the creative team of this year's Playfest reading, What's Best for the Children? I'm Roberta Emerson. I'm the director of New Play Development here at Orlando Shakes. And on behalf of the entire Orlando Shakes team, we welcome and we want to welcome you with the Basil Keeney family who joined City Beverages in presenting Playfest 2021 with additional support from Frank Santos. Uh, today, we want you to sit back and hear from the creative minds of those bringing us this dark comedy and in uh, person performance that will take place at Orlando Shakes on Sunday, November 7th at 7 p.m. It is my pleasure to introduce you to the playwright of What's Best for the Children. Please welcome the acclaimed Idris Goodwin. Hello, how are you? Good. Thank you for coming with us today. For sure. Uh, mm -hmm. As the director beside uh, of this particular uh, reading for New Play, I also participate in many productions throughout the season. And one of those, um, I am directing What's Best for the Children. Uh, and let's also bring on my uh, wonderful partner, Nick Bublet, who is the Playfest producer for Playfest 2021. Welcome, Nick. Hello, thank you for having me. Thank you guys. Thank you for joining me this lovely morning. It's super morning for you though, Idris, isn't it? Yeah, but I was just saying that, you know, I have small kids, so like I'm I've been up. I'm already I'm already ready for lunch. <laughs> Yay, he small kids. Coffee. Yeah, I've been up since six, getting yeah. them together, dropping them at school. Yeah. You know the routine. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna get us started so that we don't um we don't take too much of your day so you can get back. Um, so you've written this dark comedy, right? That's about the first black chairman of the state uh, school board committee. Uh, who's about to take a vote, right? On a, I don't want to give too much away, but who's about to take a vote on a measure until some groups, you know, decide to step in and and influence, try to influence his uh, decision. What's your inspiration for writing this piece? Well, you know, I I got really um, interested in uh, how textbooks and how curriculums, state mandated state mandated curriculums are developed. It's really interesting and complicated history, and it's still a reality. Um, and there's so much misinformation, you know, we are in the information age, but we are also, which means we're also in the misinformation age uh, in that we are creating misinformation, but also we're uncovering the source of misinformation. It's everything from, you know, the whole lost cause thing, you know, with, with the Confederacy and how that was a calculated and orchestrated narrative that was constructed and the way in which, you know, the, the, the standards set forth by the state of Texas determine um, uh, tech, what's in textbooks that are used all over the country. So mm -hmm. very, you know, so, so a society is, is defined by what the stories are. And so, uh, I find this like so many things in America, like absurd, uh, which then said, I want to, I want to write about this, but I, I don't want it to become heavy and didactic. I, I think I want to lean into the absurdity of it, mm. um, and and this is what came out of it. I also just wanted to try. I've I've always been a playwright that's been you know my you know it's it, my, my plays are always funny at of varying degrees, but I've never tried to write a full on comedy, capital C comedy. Okay. Yeah. And so this is my attempt at you know ha having a conversation about education and curriculums and power and ideology but i was like i really want it to just be funny though you know because then it's like, then it's like we can people actually want to engage with it in a different way and i think when you can make people laugh um it it, it sticks with them a little bit a little bit stronger yeah can you talk a little bit about where you are uh because we've had this conversation about where you know this part of the process is going to sit for you can you talk about what you hope yeah. to get out of yeah. Yeah. I mean, so I so this play was uh, commissioned years ago by Boulder Ensemble Theater Company. Shout out Boulder Ensemble Theater Company. <laughs> and we we did some workshops, but they were just like actors in the room. You know, we did we never had an audience. Yeah. And then shortly after um, I stepped away from the play for a minute, you know, the pandemic hit and I've just I haven't heard this play with a live audience. And so that was one of the big goals of mine uh, to, to, to do this program is because I wanted to hear it with a live audience. And because um, I think if it's not funny, <laughs> <laughs> that's a problem. So yeah. I, I, you know, and there's no way that that, that you can't determine that in 
in the virtual world. Right. So um, it's just, it's too delayed a reaction. You know, people be on mute. You see, but you can't, you can't judge the quality of the laugh. Like, is this a belly laugh? Is this a, right. a chuckle? You know, that's how we yeah. know if it's, if it's popping or not. Well, and certainly as a director, I'm interested to see, you know, how, how they do respond. Cause yeah. it just reading it over and over and over and to get ready for the process of, you know, how do we put this, you know, asking all the questions, how is this going to work with the audience, especially in a reading situation in COVID, right? Like how do we, how do we navigate kind of these uh, things that the play is asking us to do? I'm also interested as a director to hear what, you know, some of the things that I'm laughing at as I go through it myself, is that going to translate? Yeah. To this mm-hmm. audience because it because it's funny but there's there's some deep truth to it too right so sometimes yeah, i'm like am i allowed to laugh at that because you are allowed yeah. you're allowed <laughs> to laugh you laugh that's at. the best kind of comedy yeah yeah um so yes that's i i i look forward to you know figuring out those moments can you, idris i have i have as a as an artist and as a person looked up to much of your writing for a very long time um so i wanted to kind of shift gears just a bit and ask you, what what drove you to becoming a playwright to writing some of these these amazing stories that you've put out for us that we get to uh, be blessed? Yeah, um, that's thank you. That's really kind. I um, I've just always known that the arts was where I belong. Mm-hmm. Um, always. I didn't grow up, you know, in New York City or anything. You know, I grew yeah. up in Detroit and suburbs of Detroit, you know, not, you know, the the idea of becoming a professional writer or anything like that was not, I didn't know anybody who did that, but I just knew. And um, moved to Chicago in 96 and just said, oh my God, like I want everything this city has to offer (laughs) as a creative and just found my way into a theater um, and started writing plays in 20, I just celebrated my 20 year anniversary in September. Ooh, congratulations. First play, thank you. My first play went up in September 4th, to, uh, third or fourth, uh, 2001 uh, at the Lunar Cabaret as part of the Rhinoceros Theater Festival. Shout out to Curious Theater Branch. And mm-hmm. the first four years of my playwriting life, I was always in the Rhinoceros staff. So I was doing one play a year. And then I started my own theater company, Hermit Arts, ran that for about seven years, and then started kind of moving around. And so, you know, started becoming more of a kind of a national playwright um, and moved away from having my own company. And um, yeah, and so it, it's just been something I've always, that just came to me rather intuitively. And um, yeah. Do you have, do you have uh, either for what's best for the children or for anything else, do you have uh, hopes and or knowledge of next steps? Um, I, I, yeah, well, this 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 uh, journey I'm about to embark on with you all is actually really key to me because I because okay. I think the, the play is close. Mm-hmm. I think this to me is about getting it there, like just getting a handle on it and and really understanding it as a as a as a comedic text, like just okay. understanding it and like how it flows and where the big where the small laughs are, the medium, you know, it's yeah. starting to just like get get a little control over it. And then at that point I want to I want to send it out. I, I think it's the play, you know, as we're in this moment of critical, you know, I just I have mm-hmm. a whole series of, of called Free Play, which is all about, you know, plays to to have com- spark conversations around race. And yeah, I had an educator in Tennessee say, I, I really want to do these, but we can't because, you know, critical race theory is illegal. <laughs> <laughs> Lord. You know what I'm saying? So, so, so uh, I think this play is timely. Um, yeah. And I, I think because it's a comedy, I, I, I think it's got a lot of reach. And so, yeah. You know, this to me is I hope to to leave this experience, you know, feeling really confident and and starting to circulate it uh, in the field. Yeah. And it's interesting because as a as a parent, one, as an educator. Yeah. And then as a director kind of approaching this text for me is is personal in a sense. Right. So, Mm -hmm. again, it's hilarious. The absurdity of it almost hits you deeper. Mm-hmm, right, mm-hmm. because you 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 are coming at it from those perspectives right. where this conversation matters, and the fact that people you know don't necessarily want to have it 
right? And you're presenting it in a way that hopefully makes it a little bit more um, attainable, touchable, yeah. right? Um, not scary. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Cool. Thank you. Um, Nick, did you have any questions? That you wanted to I'm just, I'm very much enjoying the conversation that's happening and I'm, I'm loving everything that I'm hearing. Um, I, I, no, I don't have anything really <laughs> to say. You can keep the conversation going. I'm, if anything, I will jump in. Awesome. So, uh, I'll have, I'll ask one more just cause you know, I think it's, it's the audience should maybe get some enlightenment on it. You use a lot of, um, there's a lot, there's rhythm in this, right? There's yeah, music, there's sure. beats, there's, you know, some throwbacks to, uh, some different, you know, I won't give it away, but some different styles of, uh, getting the audience involved and using rhythm rap. Um, what made you go that route in this particular piece? So I so wanted, I, I, I like to, I like, pair, to, I like to I take like advantage of everything of that theater offers. Um, I like to really embrace what theater is when I write. I don't, I don't write, you know, TV shows, but on a stage, you know, or a movie that's on a stage. Like I try to really lean into what theater is real time storytelling. Right. And so I draw from all the tools uh, that are available in engaging an audience and taking them on a journey. I, I came up doing rap music. And so I draw from that. I learned a lot about the stage, quote unquote, from being a rap performer, writing lyrics, um, while also, you know, creating plays. And so to me, it's just, again, a very intuitive thing. With this play, I want, I want folk not only to follow the journey of this character with but I also want them to reflect on their own educational journey, reflect on the way they've been taught, right? Or mistaught and, you know, and, and to create some element of interactivity, right? And so, you know, I, I like to layer the, the theatrical experience where we can be on multiple arcs at the same time, you know, we can, we can break it up, you know, so, yeah, I'm, I'm just trying to draw, but also too, one, one quick thing too, I'll say is that part of the, I, I used a very unique uh, uh, method to create this show. It's called the joint stock method. And that's basically where you get a bunch of people in a room together and you just approach a theme from all these different angles and you just generate stuff. And it's not stuff you're going to use, but you just, it's just a way to investigate and explore an idea from different ways. And so some of the interstitial stuff, the little the little quizzes and things like that, came out of the the beginnings of this of this journey, and I, I wanted to honor some of that and sprinkle some of that in because it it is so such a big topic, right? And there's so many ways to sort of attack it. So, you know, um, anyway, I've said too much already, but yeah, that that's kind of the idea. No, nope, no, nope, never too much. Thank you so much. Um, thank you for your time. And we are so excited to have you with us uh, next week. Not even like what? Yeah. A couple of days. Right? Yeah. We're here. We're in there. <laughs> uh, What's Best for the Children will be in uh, in person reading at Orlando Shakes on Sunday, November 7th at 7 p.m. You can order your tickets at orlandoshakes.org. Uh, we wholeheartedly thank our presenting sponsor, the Basil Keeney family, joining us with City Beverages and additional support from San Frank Santos. Don't miss out on Playfest readings this year. We say that every time, but you really do not want to miss the plays that we have this year are something else and you really want to be in the room when this is happening. Friday night readings, not to be cliche, I know. Um, online only will be held November 5th and the 12th. Saturday readings will be held November 6th and the 13th and we'll begin at 2 and 7. Please remember to please wear your face mask when you enter Orlando Shakes. We are following uh, our strict policies and protocols and for the time being, you can bring a negative COVID test uh, or if you prefer proof of vaccination. So your negative COVID test or proof of vaccination uh, will get you into Orlando Shakes so you can experience the wonderful work going on along with your photo identification so that we can make sure it's you. Thank you so much for your time. We look forward to seeing you at Orlando Shakes for Playfest 2021 and what's best for the children. <laughs>